Let me tell you about the 17 things that you have to do to pass A+. Plus. Number one, don't start with A+. Plus. I know what you're saying. What the hell are you talking about, Rob? What do you mean don't start with A+. Plus? Don't start with A+, plus if you really want to pass A+. Plus. You need to start somewhere else. So A+, plus, if you aren't familiar, is a two-part exam that literally has about a thousand different topics on it. That's not just uh, me trying to scare you. That's not just me coming up with something. It's literally a thousand in between both exams. It's a thousand different topics that are covered on those two exams. So what I found with my students, my guys, my girls, is if you start with ITF Plus, start with the IT fundamentals, the fundamentals of IT, it makes those more complex topics that are covered on A plus that much easier. So number one, don't start with A plus, start with ITF. Number two is know exactly what is on the exam. You can actually download the exam objectives directly from CompTIA for absolutely free. It's going to tell you all of the things that are on the A plus. While you're there, also download all the stuff that is on the ITF Plus because you'll be surprised how much stuff is on there. It's not just what is a computer, what is a router. It goes into coding, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, cybersecurity network, a little bit of everything. So download those objectives so you know exactly what's on the exam. The next thing you need to do is watch some video training, but you need to do it in the right way. How is that? So first thing you need to do is press play. Whatever the video is talking about, whatever the topic is, pause it once that explanation is done. Take notes, test yourself on that topic, repeat. Watch the video, pause after it gets past the explanation, write and take notes, and then test yourself without looking at the video and without looking at the notes. You should be able to explain in your own words exactly what you just watched. This isn't just like some passive stuff where you press play, you let it play in the background. That's not how you're going to win. You got to actively participate when you're looking through the videos and the playlist that we have on this channel and just whatever training that you're using, you have to participate. You got to be active if you want to win. Now, this is a big one. A plus is a two part exam. You got to take core one first. Take one core one first. You're grown. You can do whatever you want to. But if you want some guidance from me, a person that has helped thousands of people do this, take core one first, man. Core one and then core two. Take core one first, then core two. Take the first part, then the second part. Number five, build a home lab. Build a home lab. You can do a physical lab or you can do a virtual lab, but you need somewhere to actually practice the skills that are needed on the exam and when you actually get a job. So make sure that you are setting up virtual machines, a virtual environment, a real environment, whatever makes you feel most comfortable, but you need a place where you can actually practice these real world situations. Number six, you got to practice, 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 practice every day. Don't be like AI. Don't be like Ellen Iverson. If you're too young for that reference, sorry, Google it. Listen, every day you need to be practicing on practice questions. Wherever you get your practice questions from, if you get it from us and you're in our program, great. If you get it from somewhere else, great. But whatever practice tests that you're using, you need to practice them every day, not monthly, not weekly. And when you feel like it every day, that way you can get used to CompTIA's format, tone, and the traps that they set intentionally to trip you up and to mess you up. Okay, So make sure that you're practicing every day. You need to be aiming for excellence when it comes to these practice tests. So number seven, you need to be aiming for 80 to 90, preferably 100% on these practice exams. Now, please understand, if you get 100% on the practice exams, you get 90% on the practice exam, that does not 100% guarantee that you're going to pass the real thing. But if you're getting 40s, 50s, and 60s on the practice exam, that usually is an indication that you're not really grasping the concepts. Remember, the practice questions are just to get used to the format, right? And just to see what you retain. Do not be overconfident and think that, oh, I got 100% on this practice quiz that I got from a random place and think that that's going to correlate and mean that, hey, man, I'm going to pass the A plus for sure with no issues. The next thing you need to do is practice simulations, also known as PBQs. So performance-based questions. Performance-based questions are something that's a lot different than what are on other exams. So it's not just a question, I got multiple choice 
answers. You have to pick the right answer. You have to actually fix something. A PBQ simulates a real world problem or issue, and it's up to you to fix it. So you need to make sure that you are practicing those uh, simulations or PBQs. It may be stuff centered around connections, networking, cybersecurity, setting up firewalls, setting up routers to make sure that everybody in a certain area can talk to each other securely and nobody gets disconnected. Just any scenario that you can come up with, right? Anything that you can think about that is inside of those objectives that we talked about earlier, make sure that you have a simulated environment that you can actually do those things so you can practice, practice, practice. Because a lot of times, uh, you believe it or not, without this uh, 17 things that you need to do. A lot of people have no idea that one, it's a two-part exam. And another thing is that there's going to be simulations at the very beginning. The first thing you're going to see on the actual exam is going to be a simulation and that can scare people. That can make people think that it's over with. Imagine you are been studying and the first thing that you see on the exam is something that you've never seen before, right? It can scare the hell out of you. You can get the bubble guts. You can think that this is the thing for you. So just make sure that you give the simulations. Number nine, make sure that you understand, not memorize. Understand why you're picking certain answers. Understand why you're picking certain things, not just memorizing things. Okay, this is what the question is. This is what the answer is. I have no idea why I picked that, right? You need to fully understand what the question is asking. You need to fully understand why you're picking the answer and also why the other answers are not correct. This is going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more critical thinking, a little more analysis, but it's going to help you when you actually get inside of the exam room. So my guys and my girls um, that are in uh, our programs and our training, we shoot for 60 seconds. You need to be able to analyze the question and pick the correct answer in 60 seconds or less because on the A plus you don't have that much time. You got a maximum of 90 questions. You only got 90 minutes to answer those questions, okay? Now, number 10, even though I said don't memorize, there's still some memory, right? You got to recall stuff. And I think a really good way to do that and a focus that you need to use your memory with is acronyms. So you can use flashcards to remember and memorize acronyms. That is one thing that you do need to memorize, right? So you need to memorize the acronyms because most of the questions on the exam are going to have a lot of acronyms. So it's going to be things that are not spelled out. And if you have no idea what the acronym stands for, it's going to make the question a thousand times harder than it really needs to be. So just make sure that you use flashcards to go through port numbers and acronyms. Those are two things that are uh, really tricky and you know can trip up people. It tripped up you know, me, especially when I was first taking the exam. And I don't want you to be in the same situation that I was in. So make sure that you're looking at port numbers and that you're looking at actual acronyms. And as soon as the acronym comes up, you'll know what it stands for. Look it up just because most likely you're going to see it again. Okay. Number 11 is I want you to use the pompadour technique, right? So this is a technique where you do things in 25 minute sprints, meaning that you do a study session on whatever topic, whatever domains in 25 minutes, no phone, no distractions, not doing anything else. And believe it or not, I use this technique when I take certifications, I tell my students to do the same thing. I even do this in real life. I'm using a pompadour technique on this actual video. I got a timer, don't believe me, right here, set right here, uh, to actually go off in 25 minutes. Hopefully I can finish this in 25 minutes, right? Hopefully I can shoot this video, send it to the editor, and then he sent it back in 25 minutes. But anyway, 25 minutes, right? So you go 25 minutes, go super hard, no distractions, and it's going to blow your mind how much you can actually accomplish in 25 minutes. Take a five-minute break, come back 25 minutes. Five-minute breaks, come back 25 minutes. Try it out. Number 12, review your week areas weekly. So come up with a goal on Monday, and by the end of the week, kind of see – that I get stronger, that I strengthen that area, and what are your weak areas? Every week, see how much you're progressing and what you need to work on. And do not shy away from your weak areas. That actually needs to be your central focus. Uh, a lot of students, uh, even me a lot of times, I would stray away from things that I did not like, from things that gave me the bubble guts, from things that just made me feel uncomfortable. But focusing on those things that are uncomfortable outside of the exam room are going to make you so much comfortable inside the exam room. Number 13 is a big one. I just wanted to hit it one more time just so you understood. Make sure that for core two, that's a completely different monster. It's a completely different beast. Do not, do not, do not study core two 
at the same time as core one. You have to separate these things. It's too much information. It's too much for you. You're going to get overwhelmed, you're overloaded, and you're going to get confused. You're going to be in core one, taking core one, and things from core two are going to be seeping in. Take core one, pass it, and then move on to core two. Until you pass core one, core two does not exist. Number 14, join some type of study group, whether it's free or paid, and find some type of mentorship and get around people that are trying to do the same thing as you so you can get feedback, so you can get critiques, so you can get tips, so you can figure out exactly what you need to do and not be in an echo chamber or be even worse, isolated by yourself, not knowing what to do, not giving up, not being held accountable. Get around some people that are trying to do the same thing as you. Lastly, take a real practice exam, not just five questions here, 10 questions there, but a whole practice exam that actually mirrors the real thing. So 90 questions in 90 minutes and preferably let it go over the stuff that you suck at, the stuff that you're scared of, the stuff that you do not like, and it's going to make you so much better. Number 16, eight, a 30 day game plan, literally day one, all the way up to day 30 and say exactly what you're going to do every day. By day 30, that should be exam day if you do it correctly. But every day, create a plan just for you that in 30 days, this is my get core one in 30 days. This is my study plan for the next 30 days, right? And every day map out exactly what you're going to do and make sure that before your head hits that pillow, that you get those things done before you go to sleep. So number 17, believe that you can pass, believe that you can do this. Confidence is a shortcut. Confidence is a cheat code. Believe you can pass, but act as if you're going to fail. Meaning that you need to prepare relentlessly. You need to study like your life depends on it. Believe that you're going to pass, but make sure that you have done the work to back that belief up. Passing A plus is possible. I didn't see single moms, military folks, truck drivers, nurse practitioners, first responders, retail people, Uber drivers, all pass A plus. And this 17 step framework should help you pass as well. If you're looking to pass your first certification in the next 10 days, Look in the description below. I'd be happy to help you. Other than that, I'll see you in class.